roll into our post-race media availability this afternoon of the Bank of America 500. We've now been joined by Jenny Hamlin, driver of the number 11 FedEx Toyota. And Jenny, uh, a hard-fought run out there for um, your team. And um, just tell us a little bit about your run today here at Charlotte. No rush. Thank you. Um, you know, we uh, definitely hurt not having that uh, practice on Saturday. We didn't have a very good car uh, for the most part today. Uh, we we got some good track position on long runs. We got some good track position on pit road. Uh, but other than that, um, you know, we I thought we were somewhere around a sixth to ninth place car, and, and obviously the pit crew did a great job at the end, which – you know, them picking up all that spots between that and first uh, pit stall and pit road. I think, you know, that's kind of a normal stop for them. All right, we'll go ahead and take questions for Jenny. If you have one, please raise your name and state your name and affiliation. And we'll start with Jenna. Sound tired and, and you look pretty worn. It, it, and Kyle needed treatment. I mean, is it hot? Was there an issue out there today? Probably humidity. I think it's the, probably the biggest uh, factor. Um, looking at my suit, um, you know, you usually can tell hydration level from my suit. Anytime it has white streaks all over it, you know, I'm I'm spent yeah. pretty good. So I feel pretty bad, no doubt about it. Uh, but it's getting better by the minute. Um, my second question is about the 78. Um, you guys are affiliates or whatever you want to call it. Why? Is he so much better than you guys? Um, uh, he's just got more speed and more speed in reserve, I would say. You know, I, I think they can be a little bit off in balance and still be a little bit faster uh, than what we are. Um, where I feel like the races we run competitive with him, it's been my balance has been superb and then I hear in our debrief he hated his car so you know we just uh I think they just got a little bit more speed and reserve honestly so um, I mean they build their own bodies and and do their own thing out there you know they just use our parts to put it all together so um, they do a phenomenal job you know there's something to be said too about you know uh, having a two-car team they can focus more on those specific cars, and especially just one car in the playoffs, uh, I'm sure every resource and every overtime hour has worked on the 78 car. So um, it's just sometimes with a four-car team, it gets spread out, and it takes longer for updates to happen because you can't go to the racetrack with, okay, this one car has got, uh, this is better on this car, this one's older on this car. They want to have it the same for everyone, and that takes time. Uh, so I think that uh, there's something to be said about that. walked in. Um, Chase, another solid performance by your team um, in this round of playoffs. Just talk a little bit about your run today in the 24. Yeah, it's been a uh, been a solid start. Obviously, we'd love to we'd love to pick up one spot, um, but you know, overall, just the way we've been running since the since the playoffs started has been uh, has been refreshing and and definitely uh, makes it a lot of fun to come to the track and and know that. Um, you know our our car is gonna gonna drive pretty good. Our pit stops have been really nice, and um, you know now is definitely the time of year to do that. So hopefully we can carry it forward, um, <clears throat> what five or six more weeks, and um, see what it's got to offer. All right, we'll continue with questions for Jenny or Chase. I believe you have one left. Uh, yeah, Barry Richmond, Piedmont Broadcasting uh, Corporation, Danville, Virginia. Uh, Denny, how prepared was your team, or really all of the teams, um, for a full race un uninterrupted with rain? And then in a, a follow-up to uh, Chase, two second-place finishes. Talk about that going into Talladega next week. Uh, I think we're always prepared to go the distance. I think that you know the, the adjustments they made uh, before Tech last night was based off of a race today. I think we would be caught more off guard if this race went in tonight than we would if it went off its schedule like today. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's nice. Sorry. Uh, it's nice to, to run in the top five uh, solidly. Obviously, 
you hate to run second because that means you were close to first, but um, you know, hopefully, uh, hopefully we'll have our day uh, sometime. Jacob Zuma, Performance Motorsports Network and Race Chaser Online. Uh, one for each of you. I'll start with Denny. Uh, I know Martin won the race, but it seemed like today was the first time in these playoffs that we've seen a lot more of a fight persistently throughout the race from you know, Harvick and a Ford, and then you've got Larson and Elliott that were up there towards the end. Do you, do you still feel like the Toyotas have the dominance that they've shown the last five weeks, or do you guys feel like uh, maybe that the gap has closed somewhat? Well, I think the gap is gone, <laughs> honestly. I mean, we qualified front row with uh, JGR, but uh, that's one lap. I, I noticed in practice, though, that um, you know our cars were spread out all through the field. Um, so I, I definitely thought that we were not as strong when we showed up this week as we'd been in weeks past, or other guys, you know, just were a little faster. So, it, which is to be expected, honestly, at this time of the year. Um, you know, guys are going to step up their games and bring the best of the best. And Chase, for you, uh, Denny cited the humidity uh, just before you got in here. Obviously, we saw it was a really physical, really grueling race. What did you feel in your car? What were the challenges for you as far as uh, this day goes and, and going the full distance? Yeah, it was hot for sure. Uh, one of the, I'd say one of the hottest race or toughest races of the year from that perspective. Um, I feel like we kind of had a mild summer, um, in my opinion, and it was just it was humid and hot today for, you know, here we are in October, so uh, definitely warm. Chase, you feel any better uh, after today, your second, where you're sitting as after last week? Uh, it definitely doesn't make last week any better uh, by any means, but the way, we, the way we've run over the past two weeks is definitely refreshing, and, um, you know, you hope that we can keep running like we are, and, and uh, you know, like I said a minute ago, if we, if we can, then opportunities will definitely be there. If we capitalize on them, hopefully we'll have our day. Cole with AutoRacing1.com. This is for whoever wants to answer it. Uh, we heard uh, Kevin Harvick in his post-race interview talk about how the traction compound was definitely going away as the race went on. Was that something you guys noticed while you were driving out there? Was it a challenge to, to, to find grip as that traction compound went away? I thought it went away a little bit. Um, it was definitely pretty grippy up there. And, and um, you know, it just never seemed like the, the top top came in. I guess guys were just a little... Skeptical to get up there. It never really got dusted off, so it was hard to leave that middle groove uh, from what I saw. I agree. Additional questions? Go ahead, Tyler. Tyler had the racing experts. I know this was touched on a little bit, but can each of you just talk about uh, a humid day like today, being behind the wheel for 500 miles, three hours, and the challenge of uh, keeping focus when it gets down to the end of these things? Yeah. Um, I mean, it's nothing I haven't seen before. Uh, it's, uh, you know, you're prepared for it. Uh, we always know the 500 miles here at Charlotte's um, like 600 somewhere else sometimes. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, I, I think the humidity probably is what drained me the most today. Um, you know, like I say, it's, there's a lot of salt stains all over my suit, so that tells me, you know, dehydration is, was, was definitely a factor today. Mike Salarte, Spectrum News. Question for both of you. Top five finishes are nice, but next week the, the wild card is in this segment is Talladega, and there, nothing is guaranteed going to that track. I mean, just your, your thoughts going into that one with the nice finish today and how you hope to not go backwards next week with everything that's uncertain. Yeah, I mean, I, I like the change to move it to the middle. Um, it, it definitely, I think everyone has to race, you know, all day. Um, you know, I, I think that uh, you, there'll be battles all through the stages to try to get points, just, just in case you get in a wreck late, it, it doesn't hurt as bad. But, I mean, we've seen the fall Talladega race be 
a lot of carnage, and I would suspect it's going to be the same. You just hope you're the lucky one that gets through it. Retweet. We're going to continue to roll into our post-race media availability of this afternoon's Bank of America 500. We've now been joined by our race-winning team um, crew chief, Cole Pern, and team manager, Joe Garonian. Um, it's always a nice ending to a day when you can walk in smelling like champagne um, into the media center. So um, we will start, Cole, with you. Um, you know, the, the 78 team started out a little bit uncharacteristic this weekend, struggled a bit. Martin mentioned in his post-race interview how much that frustrated the two of you. You were determined to make up for it today, and you did. So talk a little bit about this weekend, the team efforts to get the car better and ultimately being able to celebrate victory lane. Yeah, it uh, definitely didn't go the way we wanted to or the way we drew it up, but, you know, we kind of missed it a bit in qualifying, and this shows you how close everything is. I mean, we weren't off by much, and all of a sudden, boom, you're 17th. So, um, you know, our qualifying performance has been, you know, one of our strengths this year, and it, and it definitely wasn't this weekend. So then you go into uh, – you go into Saturday, and after you concentrate all on qualifying, then you get rain out of nowhere, and uh, boom, you're uh, sitting there Saturday thinking, how are we gonna, how are we gonna prepare for this? You know, we were off yesterday on what we thought we needed to be, and and then uh, boom, you got no race practice. So, challenging situation for sure. But you know, we just went through as detailed as we could, and you know, did the best job we, you know, that we could, and um, you know, we started the race not where we wanted to be, but you know, we kind of had a plan of how we were gonna get there, and. You know, just really worked on it, you know, a lot, you know, more so than uh, than our norm. You know, we usually feel pretty confident going to the race, but we weren't at all today. And uh, at the end of the day, you know, we got the car close, but the pit crew just, you know, put us on put us on their backs and, and got us up front. And, you know, once we got track position, I still don't know that we were the best car by any means, but we were able to, able to hold it off and get to victory lane. And, Joe, for you, this team um, is, is definitely had something special this year all season long, obviously making – an even stronger run in the playoffs. So talk a little bit about, from your perspective, what makes the combination of Cole and Martin um, so good together and really what brings this team to be such, you know, so competitive at such a high level? Yeah, well, globally across the team, it, it's just the people, obviously. And uh, with Cole and Martin and our other engineers, and even clear into the shop, the guys in the shop, it's, uh, it's about personalities, really, the way they get along and, and work together and, uh, Cole and Martin are a lot on the same page uh, with cold background driving, <coughs> excuse me, and engineering. Uh, they just fit each other like a glove, honestly, and, and we see results from it. All right. We're going to take questions for Cole or Joe. Please raise your hand, state your name and affiliation, and we'll get as many as we can. We'll start with Mike. Mike Hembry, USA Today. Uh, Cole, obviously a lot of physical problems today for drivers, heat, humidity, et cetera. Did you get any clue that Martin might have been having issues beyond the norm? Not really. I mean, he, uh, you know, he's pretty good about not not whining and not complaining about that stuff. But, you know, seeing him after the race, how whipped he was, was, uh, you know, kind of a shock. But I know I was sweating my butt off up there. I, don't, I was reminded of how happy I am to live in Colorado. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kenny, go ahead. Kenny Bruce, <coughs> NASCAR.com. Cole, I think this is your all's fifth win on a mile and a half track this year. You say you don't know if you guys had the best car or not. Is is that a concern going forward since there are so many mile and a halfs? You know, I mean, you got Kansas in two weeks coming up, Homestead's a mile and a half, obviously. Or is it just like, well, we weren't the best here this weekend. That might not be an issue when we get to, like, Kansas. Oh, you never know. But, I mean, uh, obviously this weekend was a challenge for us because we had no practice. I mean, we're a team that – you know, really uses our practice to validate our tools and then, you know, come up with a new plan for the race. And uh, we didn't have that opportunity this weekend. So, you know, I think from that standpoint, um, it's really hard to base our performance, you know, off of that. Um, I think, uh, you know, if we go to Kansas and all of a sudden we have a normal weekend and we go in the race and we're not, you know, as good as we need to be, then maybe we're more concerned. But, you know, I think uh, just the 
kind of extreme circumstances of the weekend was a bit of a guessing game. You know, we missed it in qualifying, but we didn't miss it by much. I mean, we were, uh, you know, maybe a percent off on balance or something like that, and we, we got too loose, and then all of a sudden, boom, you're 17th. So it's just uh, it's a tough, tough sport and tough competition. So, I mean, I know it. sometimes you make it look easy running good every weekend, but I'm telling you, it's not. Mike from frontstretch.com for uh, Cole. First of all, the beard looks great, brother. Um, we talked to you on pit lane in May, and you kind of made the insinuation that you can't save fuel if you're really fast. And when the caution flew around 267, a lot of teams on FanVision were coming across talking about saving fuel, and I never heard you say that. Were you at a point that far from the finish that you knew you couldn't make it on fuel and you just had to assume you'd get another caution? No, I, I got on him about saving fuel there, especially into the run. Um, we were, uh, you know, a lap or two short probably. But, you know, I think in, uh, you know, I think in May it was like, you know, extreme, extreme circumstances. You know, you're having to save like six laps or something like that. So I think, uh, you know, today we knew that, you know, <laughs> of our past history of getting our butts beat at the end of races and long uh, green flag runs at Charlotte, we, uh, you know, kind of were ready for the fuel mileage deal. And I feel like that's, something we've got better at as a team, you know, just when we get in those scenarios, we, uh, you know, before we were like, we got to go, 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 you know and I mean? Now we're, uh, we look at the bigger picture a little bit more and I think uh, obviously we were going to be fine if the fuel, uh, fuel situation came into play. Yeah, Cole, given your all's restrictor plate results this year, how much better do you feel going into next weekend now? Big time. We suck. <laughs> you know, I uh, I think Martin's like 0 for 100 in speedway races. So I know we've had a couple ones we've got close, but man, we're uh, average finish wise, we're pretty terrible. So, uh, you know, for us not to have to worry about that, and, and it's just the randomness of what can happen. But, you know, I, we always feel like we're in the randomness. So, <laughs> you know, definitely uh, doesn't make you comfortable. I know everybody in the media makes a big deal about the bonus points, but all of a sudden, you know, we look at you know, what happened to 18 today, we have a day like that, and then boom, we go to Talladega, and, you know, all of a sudden we're going to Kansas sweating it. So to come out of here and know we're in the spot we're in is massive, absolutely massive. Right, Tyler. Tyler had the racing experts. Cole, um, you said obviously you didn't have a whole lot of time to try to figure out the c balance of the car with uh, the rain on Saturday. So today, was there a lot of you uh, picking up things and making adjustments to the car, or was some of it also the track changing back into your favor? Uh, I mean, the track would change a lot today um, as it went, but no, we had to adjust way more out of our norm, I'd say. W you know, we try to focus and not make a lot of adjustments and and uh, tweak on it as we go, and today we were taking big swings at it. You know, we, uh, we got aggressive with the changes early, probably gave up some track position making slower changes, but at the end of the day, that was what we needed to do early. You know, we probably didn't score any stage points in the first one just because we took so long in the first stop making big swing at it. Um, but at the end of the day, we got it We got it closer, and then, uh, you know, we were able to pick up track position we went. But, you know, for sure, we had the green flag stop. All of a sudden, the, the balance was way different, you know, and then track cooled back down. We had those yellow flags, and it kind of came back to where our balance was a little bit happier. I think uh, the 42 is going to eat us up on the green flag runs for sure. But uh, um, after yellow flag stop, we were a lot better. Right, Jacob, go ahead. Jacob Race Chaser Online and Performance Motorsports Network. I've got one for each of you. Cole, uh, obviously the, the pairing of you and Martin has just worked time and time again. You guys have had so much success uh, since you paired up and brought Furniture Row kind of to prominence here. What is it? if you can put your finger on something about the relationship between the two of you that has just seemed to work so well and, and provide you guys with the success you've had? Uh, I mean, it's paramount. I think it's it's his relationship with, you know, our whole team and our whole team as a group. I mean, we, uh, we're we all in it together. You know, we've all, you know, we all sucked together in 2014. And, you know, at the end of the day, we didn't get on each other. It was, uh, you know, a time when we really struggled and, it was an opportunity for things to fall apart, and we all kind of looked at each other at the end of the year and say, hey, man, if we get this fixed, you know, we're confident in everybody. 
And, uh, you know, even when we ran bad, you know, Martin knew that I looked at him and had the confidence in his eyes, and he looked at me and knew that I was trying and knew that I was believing him in it. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, when we came together in 2015 as a group and just the hires we made and the team that we have is, uh, I don't know, just truly special. I mean, I, I look back on that winter a lot and say, man, if we had made this decision or that decision, we'd be, be as good today. And, uh, you know, it just kind of all fell together. Joe, kind of to build on that a little bit, uh, uh, Furniture Row, just from where you guys started, I call it kind of humble beginnings in a way because you guys have literally come from the bottom of this series all the way now to be sitting basically right at the very top. Uh, talk a little bit about, if you can, kind of the journey that this team has gone on over the past decade or so from your eyes. Uh, w uh, well, you see all that gray? <laughs> it starts there, but uh, <laughs> seriously, it's uh, over all these years, it's about people. Again, uh, having an owner like we have in Barney Visser and uh, the means uh, and the willingness to spend money in the areas that make a difference has been really important all along the way. And then the patience for us to gradually find better and better people uh, to get the job done. And, and really, uh, not to keep blowing coal up, but when we landed with coal, and a few of our other key guys that we still have today, it really set us on a, on a different path. And they brought a whole different group of people with them uh, that they were used to working with. And it's just gradually over the years gotten better and better. And we're, we're always on the lookout for that next super person that can uh, help the team. And again, Barney really supports us. And I, I also have to say our relationship uh, with Joe Gibbs Racing as well, the relationships we've been able to build, the technical alliance, uh, is key. Uh, without it, this stuff doesn't happen for us. So it's, it's a lot of things that have come over together over a lot, of, a lot of the years here. Jennifer, AP. Um, Cole, I was in here, when Denny was in here earlier, I asked him, I said, you guys are uh, aligned or however you want to say it, but you clearly are so much better than they are right now. And I asked him why that was, and he said that you have got reserve speed, that that makes the difference. So what does that mean? Where, where's your reserve speed? I don't know that. Maybe it's just because Martin makes less money than him. <laughs> Any additional questions for Cole or Joe? All right, we'll take one final question. Right now from frontstretch.com again for Joe. Speaking of making less money, um, you're looking next year at most likely having one full-time team. Not sure what's going to go on with the 77. Um, looking ahead at that, what challenges do you feel like that's going to present your organization getting back to one car worth of input versus two? Well, I, I think we have to wait and see a little bit, but obviously uh, the, the one thing that comes clear right away is a total focus. Uh, that ends up being applied to, if you lose one team, it all comes together for the team you still have. So we'll, uh, we'll have to wait and see how that all plays out, but um, I think it'll be, we're, we're not gonna lose a step by it, that's for sure. All right, Cole, Joe, congratulations on another victory, and uh, we wish you guys the best of luck next weekend as well. Thank you. Thank you. victory of the season. Um, it seems that with every win, your team celebrates a little bit harder in victory lane, but they clearly have a good time. So talk a little <laughs> bit about your relationship with your team. You mentioned earlier in your interview um, following the victory that you guys knew you weren't very good on Friday, but you were determined to fix it on Sunday, and you did. So talk a little bit about the overall weekend and getting to celebrate victory lane. Uh, just overall, I mean, it's just amazing to uh, <clears throat> to be a part of this team, to, to be on the roll we're on, um, have the confidence we have, have the partners we have. And I just feel like, uh, you know, everything is, is just lining up the way we need it to. So we're, uh, we're definitely working hard. We're definitely enjoying it. Our guys work so hard it's unbelievable everybody's all in 100 percent 
our guys at the shop, our guys um, here at the racetrack, our pit crew training. And I mean, just every every part of our program today was flawless, and uh, that's what it takes to win championships. So I feel very lucky to be part of this team. Um, it's been uh, an amazing couple of years, and, and I feel like it just keeps getting better. So we're going to keep working hard. We got our eye on the prize. We know where we want to go, and we still know there's some uh, some hurdles in the way. So we'll just uh, keep focused and enjoy the good days as they come. At uh, tomorrow, you know, starts preparing for uh, at next week and and the next round for sure. Hey, Martin, congratulations. Thank you. you um, so if you rewind it to back a few years of the, the way that the MWR thing happened and, and how it affected you and where you had to go, did you have any idea that you could that you could recover from that and land in a spot like this and be in this position and, and actually see the championship for your taking? Uh, no. <laughs> Just to, I mean, honestly, when all, when, I, when all that first happened, I didn't know if I'd ever be able to race in the series again competitively. I didn't know if I'd ever be able to have a chance at winning again. Um, you know, Furniture Row, I felt like, was a good opportunity at the time. It was not, you know, a consistent winner at the time, um, but it was a good opportunity, I felt like. I, I didn't feel like I was taking a step backwards. So that was that was good. That That felt okay to me. And it was exciting, um, you know, to work with new people and, and a new team and, and a totally different way of doing things out in Denver. So it was a good kind of a fresh start. But, um, yeah, it, it was a struggle for a while, for sure. Um, but I think the commitment from Barney and, and the family feel and the the drive to want to be better and be, uh, you know, a player in this sport is really what caught my attention in 2014 when we were struggling. It would have been easy for him to give up on me and give up on, you know, all the guys that were working there. Essentially, you know, we changed the crew chief because Barrier ha wanted to move back to North Carolina, and that's all we changed. You know, we went from a team that could barely run 15th to 20th to the next year making the final four. So it's um, a lot of the credit goes to Barney. But, I mean, I guess to go back and answer your question, i never seen it getting to where it is right now. This is just unbelievable. But I, we have a lot to be thankful for, and we have a lot of partners that make it possible. Barney's made some smart decisions along the way, obviously, you know, teaming up with Toyota two years ago, um, the relationship we have with them, with TRD, um, sharing chassis with Gibbs, you know, developing parts and pieces together, those type of things. It's just we're in a really great position right now. And a lot of that's because of Barney, his vision of the team and his just his determination to want to be one of the top guys. So uh, it's it's amazing to be a part of it. I think I'm thankful for it every every single day. But I damn sure didn't see it coming the way it is right now. Mike Henry, USA Today. Um, does it feel better to win today or better to know that you don't have to really perform next week? Now? Well, we definitely want to perform next week. So I won't say it that way. But I will say that it's going to be pretty awesome going to Talladega and saying, now oh, what the hell, let's go race. <laughs> Doesn't matter if we crash, you know. Talladega has just been a—it's been a tough track for us, you know, just to finish. I mean, last year we probably had the best car we've ever went there with, and we ran 20 laps and blew up, you know. So you just, God, there's so many unknowns there, and you can run up front all day long and finish 25th. You can run up front for 20 laps and get destroyed. You just never know. There's so much out of your control. So to go there and not have to worry about all those things uh, is definitely a good feeling, but. You know, we'll go there and try to do everything just the way we did this weekend. You know, we want to be the best we can be, and we we want to get those bonus points um, and stop somebody else from getting them. Um, but it'll definitely be a a little bit of a different feeling to go there and not have that pressure, not have to worry about you know if we go out early for something crazy. Tyler had the racing experts. Uh, Cole gave a lot of credit. Obviously, you guys had to come back a little bit uh, today. Uh, he gave a lot of credit to the pit crew for uh, helping you gain some spots and keeping you in this thing. Can you just speak a little bit to that from your perspective? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. Uh, he's absolutely right. They were <coughs> they were unbelievable today. They did a great job. They're a huge part of this team. They're a huge part of why we won today. You know, gaining spots on pit road. They got us the lead. We didn't pass the leader on the racetrack. We passed him on pit road. So, um, you know, once we got that, it was that was the big advantage. You know, to be the leader, it was uh, it was definitely hard to pass the leader as we've seen. So, you know, at times I thought at the end maybe the four was a little faster than us, but you know, once he got three, four car lengths, 
we were both kind of running the same line, so he couldn't really get any closer. Um, so I'd say for sure the pit crew was unbelievable. They did a great job. They were fast and consistent, no mistakes, and that's what you need. Really across the board, the whole team uh, was, was phenomenal. So uh, making the right adjustments on a car that wasn't very good at the beginning of the race is something that's not easy to do. And, um, you know, they continued to give me the changes I needed and getting the car driving better the way I wanted it to. And, and then, you know, to add to that, gaining spots on pit road every time. I mean, that's what it takes to win races and win championships. And uh, so, yeah, it felt great to just put a whole race together and uh, be consistent. Serious? <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> In my career this season. Um, I, I, I think <laughs> Shanna says 30. I, I think, um, I, I think honestly, we probably could be sitting with 10, you know, 10 or so. And that's, that's a realistic number. You know, I mean, uh, this is racing. A lot of times things aren't going to go your way. It's just the way it works. Um, but realistically, I think, you know, we could have won four or five more races and, uh, that, to sit here and say that after one and six just feels ridiculous. So uh, just an amazing year and thankful for everyone. And uh, honestly, we, we don't really think about the ones that got away. We just figure out how to not let it happen again, I think. And we've lost enough that we've learned a lot from them, I think. And uh, hopefully that makes us better going forward. Any additional questions in the press box? All right, we'll come back down to the Bob. I got a question. What is the temperature in here? Are you kidding me? I'm like, I got the chills. I wonder why. I mean, this it's is really cush. I mean, you guys have it good in here. I'm just telling you. <laughs> I'm like. Go ahead, Bob. Bob Hawker, CSPN. I have two. The first is I want to say that you told your team that when you started the race, you didn't think you had the car to win. Is that. What you told oh, them. we weren't even close to being able to win at the beginning of the race, no. And, and have you had that feeling in any of your other wins, or does that make this win any more Hell big? Yeah, great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say that it's hard to it's hard to compare because we started 17th, and that's a challenge at a track like Charlotte. You know, being back in traffic, um, I, it's really hard to get a sense of just where you stack up to the fast guys until you kind of get up there around them, uh, if that makes any sense. But for sure, we had an issue with our tires that we qualified on. Um, they just they didn't feel right. The car, the balance of the car went in a direction that we didn't expect it to, and that's why we qualified 17th. And then we obviously we had to start the race on those, and and the car actually wasn't that bad on that first run. Um, but when we put the second set of tires on, the balance completely changed in a way that we didn't expect it to. So then we had to play catch up. So I would say that we were probably worse, worse off on that second run than we were the beginning of the race. But it was, it was a balance thing that was, I think, somewhat easily fixable. Um, so I don't know. It's really, it's really hard, to, hard to say. You know, sometimes you're off and you, no matter what you do, you can't find the speed. Today I just thought we had the speed. We just didn't have the balance right, and once we got the balance right, we uh, we started picking them off. Posted po Sherry posted a photo from her at home, uh, yeah. cheering you on. C could she not? Can she not come because of treatment, or did she just not think you were going to race today, so she didn't bother coming out? She probably could have came, but it was a little bit of the weather, and mostly that it's kind of risky for her to be around too many people right now you know, after having chemo on Monday and, and germs and, you know, something as simple as a cold could put her in the hospital. I mean, it's not worth the risk. So staying home, uh, watching on TV, just, you know, hanging out with her mom and her family, relaxing. So, yeah, it was cool to see her tweet. I can't, I haven't even talked to her yet. I can't wait to call her. So we'll see.
Jacob Sealman, Race Chaser Online and Performance Motorsports Network. Martin, I got two for you. First, I asked Cole this a little while ago when he was in here, and he said a lot of the success of this unit has been about the people around you, but I feel like a lot of it has been the communication and the relationship that you two have had that just it clicks every time you guys get on a roll like this. What is it about that driver crew chief relationship between the two of you that has worked so well for you the last few years? You know, I, I think for us it's just been a, a progression. You know, I think um, when we first got together, you know, we had similar backgrounds. Our dads raced. We grew up racing with them, short tracks and go-karts. And, you know, he just went in a different path than I did. But, um, you know, I think we grew up just similar ways and have similar values and um, the way we treat people, the way we, you know, our work ethic, the, what we're willing to do. And, and um, I think the way we enjoy racing, you know. So I think early on we just uh, we realized that we had a lot in common. We love both like the same things at the racetrack and, and approach racing in a similar fashion. And um, I think, you know, we each let – each other do our own jobs and have confidence in in our our decisions so um i think that goes for our entire race team that's we have great people in 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 place and you know they're allowed to do their jobs because they do it well they're not micromanaged they're not told what to do they're not yelled at or they're not fighting all the time and of course when you have success things are always always seem you know better than than they are but you know i don't know i just um i Cole's done an amazing job, and uh, I, I have a lot of respect for him, and I try to show that, and, and he shows it back to me. And so, you know, that's why it works, I guess. But uh, he impresses me all the time. So I'm, I'm definitely a lucky guy to have him as a crew chief, and um, it means a lot to me when he when he compliments me and and shows that he has that, that confidence and that care and how much he cares about, you know, me and my family and uh, all those things. So just a great relationship on and off the track and uh you know i definitely owe a lot to him for what he's done for me and, and our race team and talking about sherry <coughs> obviously this has been a journey with a lot of different facets for both of you and this season being as magic as it has been now i've heard her talk about in the past you know just every step of this journey being one to appreciate when you have days like this, especially one today where you fought through so much to end up where you are, as you go down, do each of these wins and each of these moments mean that much more knowing everything that you guys have been and are continuing to go through? Absolutely, I think they do. And I think we, we've learned to enjoy these moments a lot more and cherish these, these moments a lot more than maybe we would have in the past. Um, and I think that goes for honestly my whole our whole team and if you've seen us in victory lane it's like a bunch of little kids the first time we've ever done anything exciting it's um it's it's just a really fun group they really appreciate it they they work so hard they put so many hours into this and so much time away from their family it's nice to see them have success and uh you know for me i i enjoy that as much as the wins myself you know just seeing them succeed and seeing them be happy and seeing their hard work pay off uh, but it it also feels pretty damn good for me just after all those years of heartbreaks and and getting close and not catching the breaks and all the things going the way you don't want them to um, that hey you know sometimes it is your turn so that feels good as well but uh, we definitely don't take them for granted we enjoy ourselves we uh, we whoop it up and take in every everything we can and uh, you know we're definitely not done celebrating this one yet Jonathan NASCAR.com. Martin, obviously, you know, you and Sherry have a lot going on during the week. When you get in that race car and strap that helmet on, is that an escape from you or, or from that for you? And what's the rush of emotions like, you know, when you jump out of the car in victory lane? When does kind of, you know, everything that's going on in your guys' world kind of hit you afterwards? It's definitely like putting the blinders on. It's definitely like, I, you know, I flip a switch and I forget all about everything in the outside world <laughs> when I'm in that car. And that's, that's a, a – really good thing sometimes especially when you're going through tough times so I've said this before that you know what we've been through and what Sherry's been through and what I've learned from her more than anything has it's helped me be a better racer um, and it's helped me just 
deal with the emotions of racing and the ups and downs and the, the heartbreaks. I mean, for a long time it was rough, right? So, I mean, this uh, this sport is, is humbling as hell. You never know what can happen next week. You could win 10 races in a row and then all of a sudden you can't do anything right, you know? So just dealing with the ups and downs and ha keeping that level, that kind of even keel and keeping your head on straight and understanding the things that are truly important, all those things are what I've really learned. And that's when, when you get out of the car after a big win, that's you start thinking about all that stuff, and that's when it hits you, you know. just It just hits you like a ton of bricks. <laughs> and it hit me today in victory lane, you know, and you, all of a sudden you can't talk. <laughs> and you feel like an idiot, but there's just so many things that you're thinking about and so much emotion uh, and so much you're thankful for because of, you know, this stuff is so hard, and you never know if, if you'll get another chance to do it. You just never know. So it's definitely an unbelievable feeling. Martin, I want to ask you about what you just talked about. Uh, was your emotion in Victory Lane mostly about Sherry? Was it about winning when you thought you couldn't? Everything. About kind of all, <laughs> the, all the above? It's just I couldn't hold it anymore. <laughs> uh, it was, yeah, I mean, Sherry was thinking about her because she's not here. I know she really wanted to be. She hates missing, you know, seeing our guys succeed. And uh, sh I, it's, I know our guys love having her around when we, when we win and, She's a fun person to celebrate with. So I thought about that. I thought about, uh, you know, winning this first w race of the round, the pressure kept coming off. It's just, uh, just a lot of things, I guess, you know. And uh, I was wore out. I just I just lost it for a minute. There's <laughs> a lot going on. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And and I, I think you know it shows just how much this stuff means to us. You know we put we put everything into this, everything we have, especially our team. Just uh, every day away from our families, like I said. And I think you know they had this car up on the plate on Wednesday or Tuesday with the nose cut off, trying to make it better. I mean, just they just the effort that they put in is amazing, and to to succeed and be a part of that, it just feels unbelievable. Two final questions over here. We'll go, yep, and then Mike will come to you. Uh, Peter Strada at the Sports Junkies 101. Uh, Martin, you now have over a full race worth of playoff bonus points. With that in mind, handicap yourself in the round of eight. I don't know. <laughs> we got three races in the round of eight, so we'll do the best we can in all three of them. And, you know, if we're lucky, we'll win one of them and get a free, free golden ticket. MightNetFrontStretch.com, congratulations, first of all. You mentioned keeping your eye on the prize. When you're sitting there, as you mentioned, putting on tires coming out and their balance being worse than it was when you qualified, do you allow yourself to have doubt creep in that maybe it's just not our day and we'll just ride it around and go to the next race? Or do you have enough confidence that this year has been so good that you know no matter what, you're going to have a chance to overcome and end up winning the race? Uh, I think you, when things are going well, that's one of the, the biggest advantages you have over the competition is is not doing that, not second guessing, not questioning. You know, I just say, hey, here's what it's doing. Tell my guys this is what I need them to do, or you know, figure out how to fix it, basically. So it's it's a it's a great advantage to have that confidence in your team, um, and it's it's only there because if we've been in a situation before and they've step, they've shown me that they could do it. You know, so uh, yeah. I, it's an advantage, and I, I definitely didn't second guess it. I was a little worried. I was like, "Well, dude, yeah, we're off quite a ways. You know, this is what I need. Good luck, <laughs> and I'll do the best I can behind the wheel." Um, it it turned out to be okay. Thanks. All right, Martin, we appreciate your time. Thank today. you, guys. Congratulations on another victory, and best of luck next weekend.